within me. Bless his holy name. Good afternoon, Base Memorial family and friends. We just want to usher you in to service today, and we want to just give God a high praise. Amen. Come on, wherever you are, just put your hands together. You can tap your feet. Put your pen on your desk and tap it. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We're so excited today to bring you our fall revival. Every Wednesday at noon and at 7 o'clock, we are going to be in the house of the Lord bringing you uh, this revival virtually. I'd like to remind you that the vehicle is virtual, but the worship is real. And since God is everywhere, you can praise God right where you are. If you're still at your cubicle, if you're at home, wherever you are, you can pause a while and, and praise the Lord with us here at noon. If you're eating lunch, eat and praise God at the same time. But we are so delighted to be able to bring you this revival. We're always excited each year when we do this. And just a little different, rather than having three days in a row we, or four days in a row, we have four Wednesdays in a row. Uh, either one speaker twice or two different speakers, one at noon and one at seven. And you'll be hearing more about the remainder of the month. But today... We've got a dynamic speaker for today, and I promise you, he'll be here today at noon and at 7 o'clock, and you are going to be blessed. There's some information we want to give you about him. Here it is. After you hear this information, the next voice you will hear will be the speaker for today. 
Dr. Lance D. Watson is a three-time summa cum laude graduate of Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan, from which he holds the Bachelor of Science in Psychology, the Bachelor of Science in Philosophy, and the Master of Arts in Guidance and Counseling. He is a magna cum laude graduate of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University, from which he holds a Master of Divinity and a summa cum laude graduate of the Presbyterian School of Christian Education at Union Theological Seminary in Richmond, Virginia. He completed his doctoral studies at United Theological Seminary, earning a doctorate of ministry degree. His achievements and recognitions are noteworthy. He's been honored as an outstanding contributor to education, an outstanding communicator and minister of the year, as well as an African-American role model by several institutions. He is listed in the who's who of religion and a member of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. He serves as senior pastor of St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia, and chief visionary for its corporate affiliates, Destiny Schools, Charisma Books and Gifts, St. Paul's Community Foundation, Nia Inc. of Greater Richmond, and Positive Power Media Group. A native of Detroit, Michigan, he is married to Rosemary Wilder, a noted and world-traveled singer, and together they parent three children. Reverend Watson is a gifted communicator, life coach, teacher, and author. After this musical selection, the next voice you will hear is that of Dr. Lance Watson. And we give all praise and honor and glory to God from whom all blessings flow, for God is great and worthy to be praised to the inspirational and immortal and invocative pastor, preacher, prophet who leads the Bates Memorial Baptist Church family worldwide to all of the official family of Bates Memorial to all of you who are sharing by way of the internet and on social media we greet you in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. So amazing is that name that at the mention of it, the Bible says every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I want to parenthetically pause right here to thank my friend and my brother, Dr. Bruce Williams, for this kind and gracious invitation to come and share in this time of revival it's a joy and a pleasure and an honor to be here and i'm glad to announce there is a word from the lord so travel with me now to the textual territory of genesis chapter 6. i'd like to read in your hearing verse 8 and in that text we discover these words but noah found grace or favor in the eyes of the Lord. And I want to tag this text with the title, At Noontime, Somehow I've Survived. One of the most famous ships to ever sail, as you know, was the HMS Titanic. In her day, the Titanic was a state-of-the-art, cutting-edge ocean liner some 882 feet long. Its beam was 92 and a half feet and with 60 and a half feet from the waterline to the boat deck. The ship itself had nine different decks and by design could remain afloat with as many as three compartments completely flooded. The Titanic was built to transport 329 people, first class, 285 second class, and 710 passengers in third class. And on her infamous voyage now across the Atlantic, she carried a total of 2,227 passengers. This ship, this major ship, was widely regarded as the ocean Olympic class of ocean liners that were seen as so substantial and so secure, they were viewed as lifeboats in and of themselves. The White Star Company, who had designed the ship audaciously and maybe arrogantly declared that not even God could sink the Titanic. And yet on April 15th, 1912, the Titanic sank into the chilly waters of the North Atlantic. And of the 2,227 passengers, only 705 survived. The Titanic, in all of its luxury, grandeur, and glory, turned out to be not so unsinkable after all. 
as we tune in to the telecast of the text we're teaching today, we are there introduced to another ship and another set of passengers who were called upon the sail through catastrophic conditions and yet somehow survived. The narrative of Noah interrupts a destructive downward spiral in the chronicle of human affairs where things have become so dysfunctional and deviant that God decided to terminate life as they knew it, to end what they perceived to be normal and start life all over again. Let there be no mistake, this was a redemptive reset, a sort of control alt delete on the keyboard of human experience where God decided to reboot the whole creation and nobody was supposed to survive. Listen to the text in its context. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. Therefore, God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Nobody was supposed to survive, but Noah and his family did. Wait a minute, that's a disruption in the plot because nobody means nobody, but somebody made it. What happened here, it's the theme of our text, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. That's the New King James. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. That's the NIV. But Noah was different and God liked what he saw. That's the message translation. Noah lived in a catastrophic and challenging moment. It was a time of excessive corruption, moral laxity, political schizophrenia and economic disparity and Noah was under pressure to conform to the culture and the crowd to fit in in the hope that he would get in and yet his love for God and his walk with God would not permit him to subscribe nor surrender. He was different and God liked what he saw. Noah's reverence of God challenged him to live differently, distinctively, and dynamically. Noah couldn't assimilate because even when he tried to participate, he just didn't fit in. It was immediately apparent to everybody that he was not a part of the clique. He was not a member of the crew. He was always out of step because he was marching to the beat of a different drummer. And somebody listening to me online knows that experience because God's grace is resting on your life. And even though you want to go along in the hope that you'll get along, no matter how hard you try, you still don't fit. You're a square in a room full of circles. Because when you are in Christ, you are in the world, but not of the world. You are unique, uncommon, particular, and extraordinary. I need somebody to type and then say out loud hallelujah to that because nobody was supposed to survive but Noah and his family did because of grace. And isn't that our story if we tell it truthfully in the midst of this global pandemic where 700,000 people have perished, millions have been infected, and countless persons are struggling, suffering, and stressed out amid all types of complex challenges and changes and crises, living in a politicized pandemic with chaos in our communities, unprecedented climate events, eroding voting rights, and the misinformation of alternative facts, we have survived only because of the grace of God. Not because of our personal goodness, virtue, personal perfections, nor collective accomplishments, but grace. I want to remind you this afternoon, grace 
is truly amazing. That every blessing we receive, every miracle that happens, every breath we take, every day we see, every mercy we enjoy is an act not of our merit, but of grace. Through grace, God has given us an acceptance that can never be questioned, an inheritance that can never be lost, a deliverance that will never be exceeded, favor that can never be limited, and a hope that can never be disappointed. God has given us in grace wealth that can never be withdrawn, a joy that can never be diminished, proximity that can never be destroyed, peace that can never be disturbed, righteousness that can never be tarnished, and salvation that will never be canceled. Beaming above human disaster, there appears a bright ray of hope. Noah found grace. Noah found grace in the eyes of God because God in grace found Noah. You missed that. But there are countless ancient flood stories in the catalogs of human history. But this one contains a crucial difference. It starts with God. It's supplied by God. And it's sustained by God. It's all about God and God's grace. That raises the rhetorical question of the afternoon. How should we respond to grace? What this text teaches us, you respond to grace with faith. His survival was possible because his faith was undeniable. Well, what kind of faith did Noah have? And what kind do we need in order to survive the stresses and strains and struggles that we've got to face? I like preaching at lunchtime because y'all get right at it with your questions. And so I'll get right at it with my answers because first of all, we need a faith that waits. Somebody say wait. The days preceding this disaster were desperate and difficult. And yet in the midst of an irreverent and impious generation, Noah was willing to wait on the will of God that he found in a word that God had spoken into his life. The number one priority on Noah's list of reminders and notifications was this, wait on God. Wait on God to do what God said he would do. Can I ask you a question? Are you willing to wait on God? Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Psalm 40 verse 1, the songwriter says, I waited patiently on the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Isaiah 40, 31 it groups us together and reminds us they that wait. It's in the plural. On the Lord will renew their strength and mount up on wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. Are you willing to wait on God? Noah was willing to wait, I suggest, because he he had heard a word. Hebrews 11:7 would later report that Noah was warned of God of things not yet seen. God gave Noah a word regarding events and experiences that he had never seen or experienced, and his responsibility was not to try to figure it all out, but to trust God to work it all out and make preparations accordingly. God reveals to Noah that he was about to do something that he had never done before and that that would require Noah to believe something that he had never seen before. It would be unlike any of his other former experiences or encounters. He would have no frame of reference, but he would literally have to believe his way into the future. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was reminded of a scene from that movie, Pastor Hidden Figures, in which Kevin Costner's character points out to his employees, presumably at NASA in the movie, that they needed calculations that did not yet exist in order to make a go, no-go decision about the space travel that they were contemplating. Nobody in that movie, or in real life for that matter, 
could figure out the mathematic algorithms that were required except three black women who were able to achieve something that had never been done before, create something that had never been imagined before in order to meet a challenge that had never been posed before. And somebody needs to grab that because sometimes God calls us to create something that didn't exist before because God wants to do what hadn't been done before. Somebody knows what I'm talking about because during this pandemic, God has been leading you into some strange, unfamiliar, untried, and untested territory. Noah would have no frame of reference, but he would have to believe his way into tomorrow. And we know something about that because none of us who are presently here have personally lived through a global pandemic before. This is a season like we ain't never seen, the consisting of viral spread and social distancing, mask wearing, quarantine. This is a time of surging disease and widespread dis-ease, political divisiveness, moral bankruptcy, and spiritual anemia and Noah lived in a similar moment and yet he chose to base his footsteps and his future not on information from his situation but on a word that he heard from God. Have you heard a word from God? I know you've heard from the political parties and from the conspiracy theorists and from social media. I know you've heard from commentators and comedians, from insurrectionists and influencers, but do you have a word from God? Because God's word will hold you together when everything else is falling apart. God's word will keep you stable when it's storming all around you. God's word will push you to progress when everybody is urging you to retreat. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God remains forever. Have you got a word from God? Noah heard a word from God and watch this, he decided to heed the word. Now, now would you just act like you Nike for a moment and say out loud, just do it. Amen. See, Noah received a word from God of an impending flood and as a result the text I mentioned in Hebrews 11:7 reports he was moved with holy fear and built an ark to the saving of his family now don't miss that Noah heard what God said then he proceeded to heed what God said God informed Noah that he was going to be the agent of redemption and recreation and once God made known to Noah what he wanted Noah made clear how he would respond God said it Noah did it can I paraphrase God said Noah build a boat and I'll keep it afloat and hearing that word Noah didn't argue he didn't ponder he didn't contemplate deliberate interrogate dissect analyze or scrutinize he heeded the word he heard let me say it differently his belief shaped his behavior boy that's worthy of tweeting right there he verified his faith not not by what he said, but by what he did. And that is a vivid illustration of how faith actually works. Because the evidence of what we say we believe is always manifest in how we actually behave. It must be vocal and visual. Faith is not just an announcement, it's an action. It's not passive, it's participatory. Faith is only faith when you export it from your head into your heart and your hands. Okay, y'all didn't get that like I needed you to get it, but let me share it this way. Most all of us, especially all of you who are seeing this service virtually can identify that all all of us are using now some form of digital device. And part of the security protocol on many computer systems is a feature that they call multi-factor authentication. This is where in order to change your settings in email or app, 
apps or programs. The computer requires you to verify through multiple means that you are indeed who you say you are. That it's not enough just to put in your email, you got to do your phone number. It's not enough just to do your phone number, you got to post an authentication code. It's not enough to post an authentication code, you got to be able to respond to your own set of secret questions. It's multi-factor authentication. And this feature is important because uh, computer designers know that hackers are busy at work with nefarious ends in mind, posing like they are real people for an evil end. Come here for a moment. Can I ask you, can your faith be authenticated through multiple factors? Not just your talking, but your praying, your giving, your serving, your loving, your forgiving, your caring, your compassion. Because if you believe God answers prayer, you pray. If you believe God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. You give. If you believe you reap what you sow, you'll be careful careful about what you plant. If you believe that service is the path to greatness, you'll serve somebody. If you believe that the greatest of these is love, you'll love somebody because love can't be the fruit if love ain't the root. It's good that you hear a word, but do you heed the word you've heard? Like, no, we need a faith that waits. But secondly, my friends, wake up and write it down. We also need a faith that works. God told Noah to build a boat. And yet one of the most striking aspects of this entire episode is that he's building this boat in the desert with no forecast of rain. Whoop, that went right over your head. I said it too quick. But Noah heard the word. He heeded the word. And he commenced construction of a boat. Hebrews 11 7 again says by faith Noah when warned about things not yet seen and holy fear built an ark to save his family. Noah acted, uh, I, I'm talking too fast, on what he didn't see. He saw what he didn't see. That, that's good right there. But also consider that he had no experience building boats. He was an amateur. He was a volunteer. Remember that the next time that God challenges you to do something, say something, believe something, and try something that you've never tried before. That the Titanic was built by expert tradesmen and it sank. The ark was built by amateur volunteers and it sailed. You got to hear me. But just look at this ship. Notice first, if you will, the seal of the ship. Genesis 6.14. The ship was to be made of gopher wood or cypress wood, which is one of the most enduring of all woods. It almost never rots. God instructed him to construct something that looked like nothing. He didn't have fiberglass, but he did have faith. He, he didn't have steel, but it would have stability. What you have is always more important than what you don't have. You can't do anything with what you don't have, but you can change the world with what you have. You can sustain a family, raise your children, build a business, support a community, assemble a dream, complete a degree, finance a future, build generational wealth if you just use what you have. No, I want you to construct something that looks like it's nothing. And I want you to cover it with pitch. P-I-T-C-H, pitch. In the Hebrew language is the word kapar, literally meaning to atone. It's a verb. It's the root word for the Hebrew day of atonement, Yom Kippur. Cover the ship with pitch, with kapar, with atonement. Fast forward to the New Testament where the Apostle Paul borrows this metaphor to talk to the faithful in Rome about the work of Christ in the world. Romans 3.20. He says, God presented Christ as the pitch 
as the kapar, as the sacrifice, as the atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Noah was to seal that ship in the same manner that Christ would later seal you and I because he is our atonement. But next notice the size of the ship. I'm still in Genesis 6.15. God knew the dimensions it needed to be, the materials that were mandatory, the weight load it could handle, the number of occupants it could house. God instructed Noah to make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. But wait, get this, leave an 18-inch opening below the roof line all the way around the boat. Put a door on the side at the bottom, build three decks on the inside, lower, middle, and upper. In total, the boat would weigh 13,960 pounds and have a carrying capacity equivalent to 522 railroad cars. What's your point? The ship was sizable enough for anybody in that region who wanted to get on board to do so. Nobody had to perish. Nobody was immediately excluded. But we are all witnesses in this pandemic that often people reject a cure no matter how severe the crisis may be. God can provide, but we got to participate because 2 Peter 3, 9 reminds us that the purpose and plan of God remain unchanged. It's God's will that we live Live. It's not God's will that anybody perish. God has already provided. The only question on the floor is will we participate? Because from the seal and the size of the ship, we can then fathom the structure of the ship. Three stories high. But wait, only one window and it was all the way up at the top. Occupants on the boat couldn't look around. They couldn't look out. They could only look up traveling through that cataclysmic experience there was only one way that they were going to know if and when they had gotten through it they had to look up can I preach to you a little because this is a season for looking up looking out will make you doubt looking down may make you frown but looking up you'll never be stuck perhaps that's why the songwriter of Psalm 121 said I will lift up up my eyes to the hills and then raise the question from where does my help come and then he doesn't wait for us to answer he answers for himself and says all my help comes from the Lord you ought to make that your affirmative testimony when people ask you for the rest of this pandemic how are you going to outlast it how are you going to pay your bills how are you going to raise your kids how are you going to ensure your future how are you going to navigate your needs just lean back and tell them all Oh, my help is coming from the Lord. Somebody ought to claim that testimony right now. My help comes from the Lord. There was only one window, wait, and one door. The door was at the bottom of the boat to make it accessible to everybody. Can I give that New Testament portability? Because in John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. The door to salvation and liberation. The door to motivation and aspiration is not a plan, not a program, not a political party. It is a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, using these metaphors, is both the door and the window that through him we get access and through him we can see our way through any storm. But also notice the security of the ship. I'm still in Genesis 6. Everything outside the ship would perish, but everything inside the ship would persist. The security of the occupants rested on the stability of the ship. Once inside, they were secure. And what a glorious picture that is of all those who walk through the door of salvation and put their trust in God. We are safe in the hands of God. 
though the storms of life begin to blow in our lives, we are in his safety. We are in the safety of the Lord. So the security of this ship did not rest on Noah's competence as a contractor. The secret of this ship's security is subtly suggested in Genesis 7-1. And I told you I talk fast, so it's going to go right over your head, but some of you will get it. Genesis 7-1 says, and the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. Woom, there it is, it's gone. Wait, not go into the ark, but come into the ark. What's your point? Can I say it plainly? This ship was secure because God was already on board. Once Noah stepped inside the ship, he was safe, settled, and secured because the text testifies that God shut the door. And similarly, my friends, the day you put your trust in God, you were shut in, you were sealed, you were safe, you are settled, you are secure. That's what the text testifies to. Our security has little to do with what we do, but everything to do with what God has already done. Because God is every day the same. God is immutable, immortal, and indestructible. You can trust in God and offer praise to God on that basis because God is unchangeable. Un and there's nothing that you face that he finds unfixable. Have you any river that you think is uncrossable? Have you any mountain that you cannot tunnel through? My grandmother used to say, God specializes in things that seem impossible and he will do what no other power can do. We respond to grace with a faith that waits, a faith that works, and discover that we have a faith that wins. Because so far as we know, it had not rained. Yet Noah was preaching and predicting precipitation in the desert because God alerted him that a flood was imminent. Noah didn't understand it, nor could he envision it. And yet by faith, he made provisions for it. He waited and he worked. He built and he boarded it because his faith had already won. There is no need to lie about it. There's a battle underway in every heart between faith and doubt. Can I encourage you today quickly? Let your faith win. Because for 120 years, Noah preached his single sermon. When God called him, he didn't give him multiple messages. He had one sermon that he preached every Sunday for 120 years. And it worse than that, it only had three words. What you're going to preach next Sunday, Reverend Noah, it's going to rain. What you're going to preach the Sunday after that, Noah, it's going to rain. What about next month, Noah, it's going to rain. For a Can you imagine the ridicule, the scorn, and the criticism that he faced? And yet Noah kept on preaching. He kept on being a witness to the glory of God because a faith that wins has to be bold. The story is told that one night a house caught on fire and a young boy was forced to flee up to the roof. His father was all already on the ground standing there in the midst of the flames and the smoke with outstretched arms he called to his son through the smoke and through the flames but the little boy couldn't see his father he could only hear his father the father yelled jump son I'll catch you the little boy said but daddy I can't see you and the father said that's all right I can see you and that's all that really matters my friend you may not be able to see what God is doing, but know that God sees you and be bold enough to jump because God won't let you down. Noah's message was almost universally rejected because after 120 years, only eight people had joined his church and all of them were members of his family. However, despite rejection, he was bold enough to keep on doing God's work. Some scholars suggest it took him 100 years to build the boat. It took prayer to keep moving. It took planning to stay on track. 
It took project management to keep track of his timetable. He had to have faith and tenacity to avoid discouragement. And that is the call on our lives to be bold in our faith because a winning faith is bold and then it discovers itself blessed. We respond to grace with faith because if you trust God, God will save you. If you trust God, God will secure you. If you trust God, God will sustain you. Even when you don't see it, God will come through. He'll come through in spite of your limits, in spite of your reservations, in spite of your hesitations. How do you know that preacher? I know God will come through because God already has come through. If you read the Bible, it didn't happen in a day. But 70 years later, animals started coming from everywhere. Birds started flying to the ark. Cheetahs and hyenas started running up the ramp. Ants and insects began scurrying up the boat. Rats and roaches began making their way to the inside. Tigers and lions marched in lockstep. And one week later, the Bible says the waters came from beneath and fell from above. That's why you got to read your Bible because the delicious stuff is in the details. That detail is in there to remind us that the God we serve is never limited to one resource. He can bring it up from beneath or rain it down from above. Act like you'll lead Adams for a moment and just say to yourself, I don't care how it gets here as long as it arrives because God will come through. God told Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. Abraham died and God told his son, don't let the dream die, but redig your daddy's wells. But Isaac died and God started talking to Jacob and said, I'm going to multiply your number. You'll be relocated to Egypt. They'll mistreat you down there. But don't worry. I will bring you out. It took 400 years. But God did come through. He led them out of bondage, led them through the sea. And the same thing happened to a teenage girl by the name of Mary living in Bethlehem. An angel showed up and said, Mary, you shall conceive a child and name him Jesus. But Mary said, I've never been with a man. The angel said, that don't matter. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will conceive. Then to maintain domestic tranquility, the angel went to her fiance's house and said, hey, Joe, don't be afraid to marry Mary because what's growing in her is of the Holy Ghost and nine months later on the backside of Bethlehem a barn became a birthplace shepherds came skipping across the wilderness wise men came bearing gifts angels sang in the nighttime sky God came through he kept his promise even though Jesus was hunted by Herod even though he had to be smuggled into Africa like an undocumented immigrant even though he was reared in Nazareth baptized in the muddy Jordan tempted in the wilderness God still came through and he healed the sick he raised the dead he liberated the oppressed he fed the hungry and one Friday after being denied by a buddy and betrayed by a friend they nailed him to the tree but God can I say it like I feel it 
God came through because Sunday morning he raised him up with all power in his hands. Good afternoon, Bates. May the Lord bless you real good. But as I lay down this mic, can I give you your shout? If God can come through for Noah, if God will come through for Jesus, then surely God will come through for you. Won't he do it? Say yeah! Yeah! That's how we survive. Hallelujah! Come on, give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the name of our God. <laughs> What a word, what a word. Y'all can keep on giving God praise. He's worthy. God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I know you have been blessed. Y'all give it up for the preacher and the preached word. What a word, what a word here at noonday. Lord, have mercy. I don't know what he's going to do this evening at 7. Praise the name of God. That kind of preaching requires a response. And it is my joy to be able to offer you an opportunity to come to Jesus. This Jesus whom he spoke of. This one who is the pitch, <laughs> the redemption for us, the one who paid the price for us, the one who purchased salvation for us, the one who made a way to God, back to God, in spite of our sins for us. This Jesus, we want to give you an opportunity to give your life to this Jesus. <clears throat> We're so grateful to know Jesus for ourselves and we pray that you will come to know the Lord yourself as well just call the church now 636-0523 should be someone on the other end of that line just in case you want to give your life to the Lord 502-636-0523 they'll take your information share with you how you can have a saving relationship with Jesus. If you already know the Lord but want to become a member of this church, they can share with you how you can become a member of this church. If you need prayer, somebody will pray for you. This is your chance. Don't let this moment pass you by. Praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise again wherever you are. God is worthy to be praised. What a word from the Lord. We're grateful to be able to do this. We know that there is a pandemic. We know that there are protocols and restrictions. and We're not in in-person worship yet. We thank God for the miracle of virtual space and our ability to be able to bring you this word today, this worship. Uh, and uh, we're able to do this in part because of the faithful giving of members and people who are not members but are friends of Base Memorial. I'm getting ready to write a thank you note right now to someone who gives regularly and just give recently, who is not a member of Base Memorial, but they know that God uh, is at work here. And because God's at work here, they want to honor what God is doing by giving to what God is doing. If you're a member of Base Memorial or a friend of Base Memorial, you may not be in either of those categories, but today you feel led to give. We want to give you an opportunity to do that. We want to say to all of our members, uh, Base Memorial, if you're not giving your tithes and offering today, and you may do that or sometime this week, we want to encourage you to give sacrificially today. Give, if you would give $25 uh, each to each person. If you're married, that's $25 per person. Uh, but we, we want to pray that you would give $25 to the revival. We're having a revival every Wednesday. Two people are coming or one person is going to preach at noon and 7 o'clock. But we've been doing that all month. And we want you to uh, give uh, sacrificially $25 uh, to the support of the revival. And uh, we ask that you would do that. But there are several ways that you can give. Uh, if you want to give, we try to make it as convenient as we can. You can give on Cash App. And that's dollar sign, uh, base memorial. You can text to give, and the information should be on the screen. And if you give that way, it will go right to our account. You can go online to give. 
Uh, that's basememorial.com. Click on the giving tab and follow the brief instructions you can give. Uh, some people just drop their gifts by. And you can come by during office hours and the staff here will make sure it gets where it's supposed to get. If none of those ways are uh, ways that you want to give, you want to mail it in, well, we'll take snail mail as well. Just mail it to Base Memorial, uh, 620, 620 East Lampton Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40203. And when it gets here, we'll make sure it gets where it's supposed to to go. And so we're just grateful again for your giving, Base Memorial members. We are relying on your faithfulness in giving. And the friends of Base Memorial, we are delighted that you have continued to give. Those who are not in either category but want to give today or want to start to give, we welcome your giving because we are, we may not be gathering uh, uh, for church, but we are still the church and we are the church wherever we are. And we're not sitting on our hands anywhere. We're still doing ministry that we believe is going to bless somebody's life, save somebody's soul, or glorify God. And so your giving helps us continue to do that. Because if there's ever a time we need a word or we need expressions of love uh, in the world, it is during this pandemic. And so the church is still seeking to be the church. I believe we have some announcements. And I want to give you a benediction before we go. But a benediction, which is a blessing. But before we do that, we want you to see these announcements. After you see these announcements, I'll give you the benediction. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What's up, Bates Memorial family and friends? Listen, this is the year that we're serving with a made-up mind, and we've got a lot that you can get involved in. Check this out. Bates Memorial family and friends. It's October, and we're celebrating 35 years of pastoral leadership by our shepherd, the Reverend Dr. F. Bruce, and First Lady, Dr. Michelle Williams. Join us Pastor's Anniversary Weekend, Saturday, October the 9th, at the 11 a.m. stream, where you'll hear the dynamic preaching gift of Pastor Tim Finley, pastor of the Kingdom Fellowship Christian Life Center, right here in Louisville, Kentucky. And then Sunday, the dynamic preaching gift of the Reverend Dr. Eugene L. Gibson, pastor of the Mount Olivet Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. The celebration continues Wednesday, October the 13th, at our 12 p.m. stream where you'll be blessed by the preaching gift of the Reverend Dr. Danielle Brown, pastor of Church Life at Cathedral International, the historic Second Baptist Church in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. And then at the 7 p.m. stream by Reverend Dr. Philip L. Pointer Sr., pastor of the St. Mark Baptist Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. The celebration continues Wednesday, October the 20th, where at the 12 p.m. stream, you'll be blessed by the preaching gift of the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, pastor of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria. Andrea, Virginia, and then at the 7 p.m. stream by the Reverend Dr. Gina M. Stewart, pastor of Christ Missionary Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. But it doesn't stop there. The celebration culminates Wednesday, October the 27th, where at the 12 p.m. stream, you'll be blessed by the Reverend Dr. Frederick G. Haynes III, pastor of the Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, and at the 7 p.m. stream by the Reverend Jennifer Carter, executive pastor at the House of Hope Atlanta, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr. So join us the entire month of October as we celebrate 35 years of pastoral leadership by Dr. F. Bruce and First Lady Dr. Michelle Williams, and we're sure you're going to be blessed. Hey, hey, what's happening, Bass family? Listen, oh, I am back. Can you believe it? <sighs> Them young people, they taking over everything. But guess what? The church ain't the only thing we got upgraded. Guess what? Here we are again, TBE. We are in the building. Guess what? It's going to be off the chain. Something new, something refreshing. Take a look. Just when I say that we go young people involved, don't hesitate, participate. My email address is at the bottom of the screen, atrl at basememorial.com. It's going to be off the chain. Can't you tell? I'm excited. Rock with me. All right. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Williams. And as always, I greet you with Jesus joy. Well, we're here for me to give you another tidbit on the update on the upgrades. We're really excited about these upgrades. And uh, I'm excited about this particular one because we used to have screens up, but now we got LED screens. These things are incredible. They're so clear, it looks like you can step right into them. And so I'm really excited about them being a part of the ministry. And let me be clear, 
When we're telling you about these upgrades, it's not because we worship buildings. We don't worship buildings. This facility is to help us facilitate what it is we believe God has called us to do. We're change people, changing the world. And one of the things we exist to do is to reach the lost and develop them into fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. And the psalm writer said to serve this present age. So this technology is our way of serving the present age and making it effective in such a way that we can transform people's lives and that people who are transformed can transform society. So that's why we're so excited about all these upgrades, but it's gonna blow your mind when you see it all together. But this, these LED screens, I'm telling you, <laughs> they're off the chain. So I can't wait till you get back. When you get back, we're gonna have go to a whole nother level of ministry. I hope you're excited about what we anticipate will happen. And so we're going to show you a little bit about what's going on. I can't wait to show you the total package because it's out of this world. Listen, continue to pray for us as we do the upgrades. And I promise you, when you get backs, it's going to be out of this world. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Hey, what's happening, Bates family? Listen, we're taking over ESPN. We call it the BFL. It's the Bates Faith League. Here is what our young people are doing at TBE. We are doing a two-minute drill. That's right, a two-minute drill where we're simply teaching our young people how to pray in two minutes. Ain't that something? That's crazy, right? All we're doing is reciting Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, and our young people are excited. Do me a favor. I hope you all are ready. Join us every Wednesday as we do what we always do, and let's go the extra mile. Join us at TBE. It's going to be all the chain. Let's go. Hello, Bates family. My name is Quisha Tony. I'm a family nurse practitioner. Um, hope all is well with everyone. I miss seeing everyone's smiling faces. I'd like to take this time just to kind of do a run through of this COVID uh, vaccination. I know the fear behind it. Um, people are skeptical on wanting to receive this this so important um, vaccine but however I encourage each and every one of you to take the vaccination it is safe the point of this vaccination is to help with the symptoms of COVID-19 we've lost loved ones that's been placed on ventilators we know people that are still experiencing long haul symptoms from this virus. So the point of this vaccination is to prevent those things from happening. So I encourage again, each and every one of you to just take the time, do your own research if you have to, to look up this vaccination, but know that it's safe. There's a myth going out there that people tend to think that they're being injected with the COVID virus. That's not true. People are thinking that it's some bogus government thing with chips being inserted. That's not true. This is the one thing that will keep us safe at this point. Again, COVID is not going anywhere. We have the fall coming up. There could be another wave. We, we don't know. But at this point, we would I highly encourage each and every one of you so we can gather again to become vaccinated. Now that we have all been thoroughly informed, it is our prayer you will allow God to guide you as you make decisions for the well-being of yourself, those you love, and others within your proximity. If you have any other questions or concerns, I encourage you to go to the CDC website, your PCP or primary care provider, or our local health care agencies to further assist you with your decisions. Until we come back to in-person worship, Take care, stay safe, and may God continue to bless and keep you. Hello, my name is Talia. I'm a part of the Bates Encounters. The word of the month for October is Fearless. We're looking forward to seeing you virtually. God bless you. That's what's going on here at Bates Memorial, and we want you to get involved. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for those announcements. We hope you will govern yourselves accordingly. We want to say again, we thank God for the preacher and the preach word. Dr. Lance Watson preached. My God, if you didn't, if you didn't get to 12 noon, you need to get to 7 p.m. He'll be back with us again at 7 p.m. here in this revival. And I promise you, you're going to get a word from the Lord. Spread the word if you are here today. And even if you weren't, now that you know, let everybody know tonight at 7 o'clock right here. 
Bass Memorial will be in revival, virtual revival, and the preacher is going to share with us a word. I want to share this benediction with you. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee, the Lord. Lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And give thee peace. And give thee peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. See you at 7.